Hey everyone, it's Carl. Have you ever wondered why one cam makes more power than another? Would you like to compare the behaviors of multiple cams without actually performing any cam swaps? Written descriptions referencing idle quality, power range, compression, gear, and converter requirements only go so far when the same cam fits both a 283 and 406 cubic inch engine. Fortunately, understanding cam specs and how they relate to specific valve events is a great way to benchmark an engine's performance. Let's take a quick stroll down memory lane. Back in the 50s, cams were called three-quarter race or full race, etc. In the 70s, cam companies began using advertised duration. This was a step forward, except the companies used different measurement standards. One company's 292 could be smaller than another company's 288. By the 80s and 90s, most cam manufacturers were publishing duration at 50 thousandths lift numbers. Customers could compare seat, 50 thousandths, and 200 thousandths lift numbers to compare lobe intensity. All these old methods gave us these generally accepted truths. Wider lobe separation and less overlap idles better than a narrow lobe separation with more overlap. Advancing the cam makes more low end torque. Retarding increases power up top. Longer duration cams make more power up top, but suffer from a rough idle and lack of low end torque. Nitrous and blower cams have wider lobe separation numbers. Unfortunately, this led to generalities such as always install a cam 4 degrees advanced or never run less than 110 degrees of lobe separation on the street. Nothing could be further from the truth. Your engine only cares about individual timing events. This is because these valve timing events create duration, lobe separation, cam advance, and overlap numbers, not the other way around. What are these four events? They are exhaust valve opening, intake valve opening, exhaust valve closing, and intake valve closing. By choosing these events independently, we have more control over the engine's behavior. What's the easiest way to do this? Check out the Summit Racing Cam Timing Calculator by using the search bar on our site or click on the Calculators and Tools link on our site and it will pop right up. By using it, you can compare each cam's advantages and disadvantages directly. So if you want something a little more dialed in than a three-quarter race camshaft for your engine, then keep watching. Summit Racing's Cam Timing Calculator does two things. First, it turns duration, lobe separation, and advance into the four individual valve timing events. It also works the opposite way. You can tweak any of the four events to see what the resulting duration, lobe separation, or advance would be. Let's look at a few common camshafts and see what's going on. The cam used in the 2001 and later LS1 and the LQ9 motors had 196 degrees of duration on the intake and 201 degrees on the exhaust. Lobe separation was 116 degrees and it was ground with one degree of advance. The bigger LS7 cam had 211 degrees of intake duration and 230 degrees on the exhaust. It had 120.5 degrees of lobe separation and it's ground with three degrees of retard. First, let's enter the LS1 cam specs into the calculator. We enter the numbers in and see the cam has negative 33 degrees of overlap. This is pretty common for a factory camshaft. The exhaust blows down at 37 and a half degrees before bottom dead center and closes at 16 and a half degrees before top dead center. The intake opens 17 degrees after top dead center and closes at 33 degrees after bottom dead center. Next, Let's enter the LS7 cam specs into the calculator. GM has decided to crack the exhaust valve open at 52 and a half degrees before bottom dead center and hold it open until two and a half degrees before top dead center. What has GM done here? They're releasing the exhaust earlier and keeping the exhaust valve open longer. The extra flow will make more power and the exhaust note will be a little louder as well. The intake valve is opening 18 degrees after top dead center, and it's closing 49 degrees after bottom dead center. Notice the LS1 and LS7 intake valves are opening within a degree of each other, and the idle will be similar between the two. 
The LS7's intake valve closes much later to shift the power band upward. This is why the LS7 cam can produce 70 more horsepower in some applications. Also notice the overlap number has dropped from negative 33 degrees to negative 20 and a half degrees. So what's the lesson here? These two cams have wildly different durations and lobe separations, plus their cam advance is nearly five degrees different. What does that result in? One of the four events lands in roughly the same place and three other events have been set to achieve a certain behavior. Next up, let's hot rod this cam a little bit. Let's say you don't mind a rowdier idle. We'll open the intake valve earlier to seven degrees before top dead center. The piston is briefly pushing air back into the intake port, which lowers idle vacuum, but we net more airflow on the intake stroke. We have to be careful though. The LS1 has true flat top pistons, which limits how soon we can open the intake valve and still have enough piston to valve clearance. Next, let's say you have deeper gears or a bigger stall converter. We can trade bottom end torque for top end horsepower by closing the intake valve a little later. We're taking advantage of the intake runner length and velocity to maximize how much air we can trap at high RPM. In this case, we'll close the intake at 50 degrees after bottom dead center. Now we're going to change the exhaust events a bit. Let's open the exhaust earlier at 59 degrees before bottom dead center and close at seven degrees after top dead center. So now is the moment you've all been waiting for. You hit the update button and here are the results. With these events, we're looking for a cam with 237 degrees of intake duration, 246 degrees of exhaust duration, 113 degrees of lobe separation, and three degrees of advance. Based on this, we'd pick a Summit Racing Pro LS Stage 4 cam, part number SUM8709. What if you have a Mopar 440, a 351 Cleveland, or perhaps a marine or circle track application? Check out some new cam specs on summitracing.com and compare them to specs for popular cams you've had experience with. You can quickly compare what makes them run like they do. Thanks to the Summit Racing Cam Timing Calculator, you can compare specs between the Obliterator Stage 3 and the Wrecking Ball Stage 4. No longer will you be confused when one person says a cam is too big and another person says the exact same cam is too mild. The calculator gives you the ability to dial in your cam choices more easily and get the results you're looking for. So how do you buy that perfect cam? Stick around. Now that you have an idea of what you want your duration, lobe separation, and advance numbers to be, what's the easiest way to find a suitable cam? Type camshafts in the search field on summitracing.com. Enter engine make and engine family information and hit the blue Get Results button. When looking for cams, it's best to leave out displacement to get the widest variety of offerings. Enter the cam style you want, such as flat tappet, hydraulic roller, solid roller, etc. You'll have a choice of what filter to use next. Go to Duration at 50 Thousandths Lift tab and click on up to five cams that have the intake duration you want and exhaust duration numbers that are close. Then hit the Get Results button. Next, you'll find a selection of cams to the right-hand side. You can pick by brand, lift, lobe separation, etc. Click on the compare boxes on the cams that are closest to fitting your needs, up to 10, and hit the blue View Compare button. Next, you will see the cams in table format. This makes it easy to find the one closest to your needs. Most times, being a degree off here or there isn't critical. Remember the order of importance of the events. The intake closing event is the most important to the power band. Intake opening affects idle quality. You can make small adjustments by degreeing the cam in. If you don't see exactly what you're looking for, just give us a call. We'll help you find the right cam and supply you with matching valve train parts to ensure your engine runs at its peak.